Hey, I'm Dr. Sam Taylor from Hospital for Special Surgery and we're going to demonstrate a comprehensive shoulder examination. Adequate exposure to the patient in order to identify deformity uh, or other signs of uh, trauma is very important uh, to any upper extremity examination. Uh, shoulder examination starts with a uh, brief and focused examination of the neck, checking range of motion, as well as a spurling maneuver, looking for uh, uh, any recreation of the patient's symptoms. Uh, any positive findings here or in the history can dictate a more detailed examination of the uh, cervical spine. First we're looking, as we said, inspection. And so we're looking for any areas of deformity, atrophy, uh, to, that can help identify uh, a traumatic cause or uh, in the case of atrophy, a chronic rotator cuff, cuff issue. After that we're going to palpate and it's important to start uh, your palpation um, and do it in the same order every time. I'll start at the SC joints, doing this bilaterally, work my way laterally along the clavicle to the AC joint, along the acromion, and back down the scapular spine. Also palpating the lateral acromion uh, and the coracoid and the bicep tendon. For, for a biceps examination, uh, in addition to uh, palpation, I like to rotate the arm internal and external and you can actually feel the biceps underneath your uh, finger. Uh, it's important to recognize that pain that recreates the patient's symptoms is considered in all of these cases positive. Uh, after that, we're going to uh, check for a range of motion. I'm going to have the patient turn around and I, I tend to uh, like to watch active motion while viewing from behind so that we can get a sense for how the scapula move. Um, we have bilateral, so it gives you an internal control. So first we're gonna ask the patient to forward elevate their arms maximally and then slowly bring them down, checking for symmetry of scapular movement. We're gonna abduct the arms maximally. Again, looking at the scapula and come on down. Good, and we're gonna uh, externally rotate um, again, looking for symmetry here. Um, and internal rotation is gonna be to a vertebral level. Um, we'll do one at a time, you're not under arrest. There we go. <laughs> Bring your arm all the way up here. We'll mark the vertebral level and then you're gonna exchange uh, and we're looking for a difference. Here we see a one vertebral uh, difference side to side. If active motion is normal, uh, then I don't uh, worry about looking into passive motion because they've already demonstrated that. In the event that there is asymmetry, this is what uh, asymmetry and forward elevation would look like. And we can clearly see a deficit here where on the right uh, he is about 180 degrees, on the left he's about 110 degrees. At this point, um, when active motion ceases here, I want to see whether this is a, a, a static deficit, in which case there's a mechanical block to, uh, to further forward elevation, or whether this is more of a neuromuscular issue, uh, but he still uh, has preserved uh, passive range of motion. In situations where you're worried about adhesive capsulitis, it's very important to get um, these motion measurements, but to do them in a supine fashion uh, in order to control the scapula so that you can uh, repeatedly do these uh, over the, the course of time to check for um, uh, progress. Next we're going to assess the muscular strength of the rotator cuff. First is Job's test or an empty can. We're going to bring the arms forward flexed to 90 degrees in the plane of the scapula with uh, internal rotation of the forearm such that the uh, thumb is pointing down. We're going to uh, press down as the patient resists our movement here, checking for, for, uh, for strength. And we do them at the same time in order to look for a deficit uh, from side to side difference, okay? So this would be supraspinatus. Next, we're going to do external rotation with the arms at the sides here, uh, and we provide resistance as the patient externally rotates. This was testing more infraspinatus in the posterior cuff. Uh, if in the setting of a large rotator cuff tear, uh, sometimes a patient will have what we call an external rotation lag, where we'll place the hand in external rotation, but they lack the strength uh, to hold it there and when we let go of the hand they get an internal rotation lag. In that case it's important to assess the far posterior portion of the rotator cuff, the teres minor. And so to do that we'll bring the arm into an abducted position here and I'll maintain the arm uh, upright 
and I'm going to ask them to maintain that position. If the far posterior rotator cuff is intact, when I let go, the hand will stay in position, okay? And if there's a large rotator cuff tear, you get what's called a horn blower sign, in which case the arm falls forward because they do not have the external rotation strength to accommodate. After that, we're going to test the subscapularis. There are a few uh, tests that we use. So uh, first would be just internal rotation strength here. However, this uh, has a lot of crossover with other uh, muscles and is, doesn't isolate the subscapularis. Another test is called the belly press, in which case the patient keeps their wrists straight, elbows uh, bent at 90 degrees, and they're asked to press down on their belly, bringing their, their arms forward. In a positive test, the patient is unable to maintain the arm in this position. Um, and in fact, you can see a lag where you place the arm in position, and when you let go, it falls back a little bit. Okay, another is called the liftoff test, in which case um, the arm is placed behind the back. And um, I find it easier to do this by, um, I'm gonna bring your arm off your back, to place the arm into position and ask the patient to maintain this position as I let go with, uh, uh, and he should be able to do that. In the setting of a large subscapularis tear, when I let this go, he's not gonna be able to provide the internal rotation and the hand will fall back to his back, okay? Finally is a bear hug test. In this, uh, in this test, you place your hand on the patient's shoulder. They place palm to palm with the arm at uh, 30 to 90 degrees and are going to press down on my palm. Uh, and a positive test would be recreation of pain uh, and weakness such that they can't uh, maintain the, the, my hand uh, on their shoulder. Impingement tests, there are two mainstays for impingement tests. First is uh, the near test, in which case within the plane of the scapula, the arm is forward flexed. And as the patient feels uh, reproduction of pain near the top where the tuberosity and rotator cuff impinge against the undersurface of the acromion and CA ligament. And the other is Hawkins, which again is in the plane of the scapula with the uh, arm abducted to 90 degrees uh, and internally rotated such that we're trying to grind the rotator cuff and tuberosity into the undersurface of the acromion. Our uh, biceps uh, and superior labral um, examinations, we call the three pack, which includes um, bicipital tunnel tenderness, which is uh, the palpation of the extra articular segment of the long head of the biceps tendon. The throwing test, in which case we bring the arm up into this position and provide an isometric um, uh, resisted force as a patient uh, tries to throw, okay? Uh, and third is the active compression test or O'Brien sign. The way that we're gonna do this, the, the test was uh, described of bringing the arm forward elevated to 90 degrees, adducted uh, approximately 10 to 15 degrees, and maximally internally rotated such that the thumb is pointing to the ground. And we asked to provide uh, resistance, okay, reproduction of the patient's symptoms is a, a positive test, and we ask the patient to describe where the pain is. Is it deep within the shoulder, indicating more of a biceps labrum complex issue, or is it uh, at the AC joint, which would indicate more of uh, AC joint pathology? Um, in order to uh, make sure that we maintain the appropriate position, we have uh, done a modification to this, uh, which we've written about in the literature where we do it simultaneously bilateral, and this allows the arm to be maintained in the correct position um, uh, during the test, uh, and also allows for an internal uh, control. The important part of this test is that the first part is the internally rotated that we just talked about, and then the second part with uh, external rotation of the forearm, such that the palm is up and uh, repeat. A positive test is uh, reproduction of the symptoms with the internally rotated position that improves or goes away when the uh, forearm is uh, externally rotated, supinated. An assessment of instability of the shoulder uh, first comes through a load and shift test. While we grade these one, two, three, uh, the assessment is really more accurate when done under anesthesia in the operating room. However, clinically, the anterior load or posterior load uh, provided to the shoulder that reproduces symptoms can be very uh, clinically helpful. The arm is uh, brought into 80 to 90 degrees of abduction in the plane of the scapula 
and we're going to grab the humerus and we're going to first for an anterior load and shift we're going to provide an anterior inferior directed force uh, feeling for the degree of translation. It's also important to note that patients uh, uh, fortunately have another shoulder and so there can be variability in the population regarding the amount of laxity and it's important to gauge the other side to determine what is normal and abnormal. Uh, similarly with a posterior load and shift with the arm in the same position we're going to bring the arm posteriorly um, in order to uh, assess for posterior laxity. Uh, each time you can feel whether this is smooth, whether there's an end point or not, or whether there's some crepitation or a crunch, uh, as you do so that can indicate pathology. Assessment of anterior instability. Uh, first, we've got apprehension test. So as we bring the arm into an abducted, externally rotated uh, position, uh, we're looking for uh, apprehension. Uh, discomfort on the patient's face, uh, tension of the musculature in front in order to guard. Um, <clears throat> when a patient demonstrates some apprehension, uh, as we go into this uh, position of vulnerability, the next thing that we'll do is a relocation test, in which case we're leaving the arm in this position and we're going to redirect the humeral head with a posteriorly directed force on the humerus in order to recenter the head. Um, by doing so, uh, patients with instability will feel better in this position and you'll actually be able to further externally rotate their shoulder once the head is recentered. The release or surprise test happens uh, as you let go of this posteriorly directed force and the patient immediately uh, seizes feeling uh, the uh, apprehension up front on their shoulder. Uh, for posterior instability, the two things that we'll use again is the posteriorly directed force from a load and shift as well as uh, the jerk test. And so a jerk test is done as you bring the arm forward flexed and we're going to drive the humeral head posteriorly and as we bring the arm uh, into extension, uh, a positive jerk test would be the humeral head relocating uh, into the glenoid. Another important uh, part of the instability exam uh, is the sulcus sign. In order to do this, we pull traction, looking for uh, a positive sulcus sign, which is a divot uh, below the lateral edge of the acromion that should reduce as the arm goes into external rotation and tension is placed on the rotator interval. Also, whenever instability is a potential diagnosis, it's important to get an assessment for global laxity or generalized ligamentous laxity. We use the Baton score in order to do this. And there are a series of tests that we ask the patient to do. First, we ask them to pull their thumb uh, to, the, to the forearm. A positive test is the ability to touch the thumb to the forearm. Next, we look at the uh, fifth digit, the pinky finger, and we um, uh, extend this. And a positive sign would be greater than 90 degrees of extension. Uh, third is an assessment of the elbows, looking for hyperextension uh, greater than 10 degrees um, will be considered positive. The same is true for knee extension greater than uh, uh, 10 degrees of recurvatum and the ability to place both palms on the floor without uh, bending the knees. Um, overall, the score is to a score of nine, getting one point for each side uh, and one point for the ability to uh, uh, bend forward and touch the ground. Uh, the higher the sign, the greater degree of generalized ligamentous laxity.